Today I want to talk with you about the group June's Diary who was put together by Kelly Rowland and Frank Gadsden in 2016. We're gonna talk about what happened to them and where they are today. In the 90s we had a lot of girl groups from Jade to SWV to Escape to En Vogue to Monk Fist, Brownstone, Internal, Spice Girls, TLC and the list goes on and on. A lot of people called the 90s the golden era because the music at that time felt so different. A lot of people say in the 90s the acts could really sing. One thing that we don't have in today's world anymore that much. Kelly Rowland was in the successful girl group Destiny's Child. They made a name for themselves, won one award after another, broke different records, had a bunch of number one hits and that made them become one of the greatest girl groups of all time. After the group split in 2005, Kelly had a plan to put another girl group together but for some reason it didn't work out. You have to understand that at that time she was focusing more on her solo career and wanted to become a huge solo artist. So her team at that time suggested her to focus more on her own solo career. In 2011 she became a judge on the UK version of the X Factor. That was the season where Kelly put one of the biggest girl groups of our time together, Little Mix. What you have to understand is between 2006 and 2011 there were no girl groups out there. Like the last girl group who was out there was the Pussycat Dolls and the Nettie Kane. Everybody was rooting for the Nettie Kane because everybody was thinking they're gonna become the new Destiny's Child because all of them looked good, they could sing, they had Diddy, they were on Bad Boys and they were the best selling artist on their label. But you know how it ends up with all the Bad Boys artists. They all fall into the bad boys curse and cannot survive. So Little Mix were the first girl group who started to revive the girl group's wave in 2012. One year after Little Mix were put together by Kelly Rowland, Simon Cowell created his own girl group on the American version of the X Factor with Fifth Harmony. Both groups were pop groups, teenager groups who were mixed with black and white members, Latino members, etc. But one thing was clearly missing, a group with black black members, a black group with R&B and soul music. I mean in the 90s we had a lot of black groups, all we had for example the group Internal where you had three dark skinned women with one white woman but overall it was an R&B group and something like that was missing. Especially in that particular time the industry was not open for black girl groups. For example Def Jam created the group We Love Dollhouse with Ryan Destiny but that didn't work out. T-Boss from T C created at that time a group but it didn't work out. Candy Burrs had a girl group with the name Glamour but it didn't work out. Tiny Harris had the OMG girls but it didn't work out. I don't know if you remember the girl group Roxy Montana that audition on the X Factor 2014 where Kelly Rowland was a judge. No it was X Factor 2013. Everybody was impressed by that group but they did not make it to the top 10. So after the show a lot of people promised them like we're gonna sign you and I think they had a record deal but for some reason they never came out. Till this day the industry make it very hard for black girl groups to survive in this industry. And another reason is a lot of people don't want to be anymore in a group. Everybody want to become a solo artist. So Kelly saw all these things and she strongly believed that we needed a black girl group. So she meet up with different TV panels and she presented them her vision. Some of them were not so interesting and some of them were really excited. At the end of the day BET was the right panel to make this thing happen. She created a team of Frank Gadsden and she strongly believed they will find the next big super group. The name of the show was Chasing Destiny. All around the country they were looking for talented girls who can fit into this girl group. During the auditions they found really talented girls. They put them on workshops, worked on their vocals, on their harmonies, on their dance skills and Kelly was really nice to the girls, really supportive, she has so much understanding for them and tried to help them. 
to be really honest, for me personally, the show was a little bit boring. Like I preferred making the band much more because they had always structure. And in that show, it seemed like Kelly did not know what to do or when it was time to take a decision, she was unsure and she was not organized. During the process, she did not know how many members gonna be in the group and which direction the group will take. So at the end of the day, she picked five members. Ashley, who Kelly already knew from the X Factor 2013 because she auditioned at that time on the X Factor. Crystal, who was already in different girl groups and worked in the past with Frank Gadsden, Cheyenne, Gabby and the beautiful Brianna. All of them could sing, they looked good, they brought something different to the table and Kelly was convinced that they had something that could conquer the world. Before she even filmed the show or auditioned the girls for the show, she had already a prepared record label for them on the table with Epic Records. They shared the same label with Fifth Harmony, so now they were ready to form a bond with each other to work harder, to know each other better, to understand each other better, to become sisters and to create something outstanding for the world. But it was not very easy at the beginning because different characters, different people and they needed to know and understand each other better because they came from different parts from the country and every city is different. Another concern that the label and the producers had with the group were there were too many members in the group. Even Kelly Rowland's husband Tim Winterspoon was telling her and during the process don't put too many members in the group because they felt that not all members will be needed and on the other side it's too much money the label will not invest that type of money in those girl groups where you have too many members in. During one episode one of the producers mentioned to Kelly that when you have too many members in a group the harmonies don't never sound good in the recordings because it sounds too loud and it's hard to work with those kinds of groups. I remember Tiny from Escape told a similar story one day to Vlad TV before they signed with So So Death with Jermaine Dupree they were was presenting themselves for different labels and they met up with Dallas Austin. After they sang for him, he was like, you are too loud, you will never go into the studio, nobody will sign you and you will never have a chance in this industry. Most of the people don't want to work with those groups. And what led to you actually getting your first record deal? Um, okay, well, we was with Ian Burks, which was our manager. He was managing, like, uh, he's had something to do with, like, TLC, Usher, all of, a lot of Atlanta acts. So he took us to sing for a couple people. We sung for Dallas Austin, and Dallas Austin was like, no, you guys sing too loud. You'll never be able to record in the studio. And so it was kind of. Really? Yeah, Dallas Austin shut you down like that? Really fast, because we were singing, like, a gospel song. And, you know, the rest of my girls, they come from the church. You know right. what I'm saying? So when you sing in the gospel or in the church you you project because most of the time they don't have mics and everybody's right. singing together exactly. so at that time we were singing we were singing out loud it was still sounded good but he was like no you guys sing too loud you know it's not gonna happen you will never be able to record in the studio and and so kind of my dad kind of told us too like you know y'all need to soften your harmonies sound good and so we worked on that and and what you need to understand is in the beginning stages of Escape, there were not four members, there were five members. But even with four members, their voices are really powerful, strong, full and loud. So with all these different points, June Star, we had not the best start in the industry. After the show was finished, they signed a deal with Epic Records. They started to work on an EP. They were working with major producers all around the country. And Kelly was introducing them to to different radio stations, TV shows, to um, award shows like the BT Awards. She was with them in the studio, was helping them on vocals and picking the right songs. She was really supporting in the beginning, but one thing was super clear to me. I knew after the show will end, she will focus more on her solo projects and her music and tours and different adventures because that's what all the superstars do after those shows. After the show, the group had different huge opportunities. They performed on the on the Essence Fest on the smaller stage. They had a show for I think one hour, and that was huge for a new group. 
they performed with En Vogue on a big national TV show. They created their own a cappella version of Drake's Hotline Bling. They had songs like It's Alright and All of Us, which was a fan favorite. Things were working very, very good for them. And at that time, it seemed like Kelly will get a second season for Chasing Destiny. The plan was to create a second group, a boy group, and then make the girls come back as superstars. They wanted to stole the making the band concert. But it did not work because right after the show ended, some months later, BT cancelled the show. And that was the era where Kelly started to distance herself from the group. I think she thought it will be easier, but she realized at that moment, oh, this, this challenge is harder than I thought. And the people who promised me things start to leave this project all alone, so I'm gonna disappear with them. At that time, Frank Edson was the manager for the group, and the group released the single Lang in 2016. The girls promoted the show on some urban radio shows and TV shows, but the song did not took off and it didn't chart on the Billboard 100 charts. They had some concerts, some live shows, but beside that it was really quiet about the group and nobody knew what will come next. In 2018 they announced the mixtape The Male Edition, where they covered some songs of boy groups and they filmed a video for the legendary Jodeci song Stay. During that time they announced they're gonna support R. Kelly for his tour and after that they supported the legendary group Escape on their tour. Later on they announced that L.A. Reid from Epic dropped them from the label. The label did not believe in them and, and because the single did not that well they believed that they will not be a commercial success as a group. After that they announced they're gonna be independent artists and they're gonna move on like that. In 2018, they released their first EP, All of Us, with six songs, charted on the US Hot Sika album charts on position 18. And it was completely financially supported by their manager, Frank Getson. I don't know which airline they used, but there was one airline who gave them the opportunity to flew for free everywhere they want to fly and that made it possible for them to stay together as a group because like I said at the beginning they came from different parts of the countries and you can imagine that it's really expensive to fly all the time in and out in and out without the backing of a huge record label so they had to sacrifice a lot they had their regular jobs and at the same time they tried to keep the group moving in one interview they admitted that there was at the beginning very fast frustrated on Kelly after she left because they thought she will be the rock of the group because it was her vision it was her group and they did not expect her to leave so fast after all that they encouraged themselves to write more songs to produce more songs and 2019 they released the singles I ain't with it and way off for the song I ain't with it they shoot a whole video and finance that all by their own. In 2018, they supported Jesse Smollett on his tour as an opening act. In 2021, they produced and wrote the song Maniac. That song was wrote and produced by Krista and her husband. They shoot a video for the song and released it and they were preparing for the Essence Festival. But after that, Corona happened. And since then, we did not hear a lot of the group. They are not that active on Instagram and a lot of people thought they broke up but Brianna confirmed some months ago that the group stood together but it's hard to navigate all the things right now because times are difficult. I personally think the group broke up. They are not anymore together or there were someone left the group and the group will not stay that that long together anymore. Here are some points why I personally think that the group June's Diary failed. Point one, this will sound really hard, but that's the truth. All of them look very good, but me personally, I think they were too old. I think Kristen and Ashley were almost 30 or over 30 after Kelly Rowland put them in the group. 
and if you have all the people in a group the group have to pop off right after they put you together like you cannot do a mistakes like there will not be a second chance even if you look the whole group they looked very mature that's not a bad thing but for the industry it's like why we should invest in this group first of all a girl group attracts younger kids like young girls some of the young boys but the majority of young girls and you need a certain age a certain certain style, a certain look to convince these young kids because those are the people who are gonna grow with you, they're gonna buy all the merchandise, they're gonna come to your shows and they're gonna attract other people to listen to your music and to put that on perspective I don't say they are all to become artists but I say they are all to be in a girl group like that's the way the industry thinks. Second point is nobody believed in them, the label never supported them, they released their first song Lance. They were never on any late night show like Jimmy Kimmel or similar shows. They were never on Good Morning America. They never had the chance to reach more people and to get in contact with a brighter audience and more fans. To perform on these shows, to show what they got. They were once with Kelly on Good Morning America but it was more to promote the show Jason Destiny. But the label never used their power to put them on bigger platforms. The third thing that I think they needed to work on was their image. One of the most important things in girl groups are the image because think of the Spice Girls they were not the best singers but the image changed the game like their image put them up front that's the reason why they are the biggest girl groups of all time. Think of Destiny's Child think of TLC what made them so great was not just the talent but it was their image. When you compare them to groups like Brownstone, Brownstone was huge they was good but the image was never there and they did not have the chance or the numbers that the other groups like Destiny's Child and TLC had because they didn't have the image they was just focusing on the vocals and that's okay but the image is an important part because to be just honest people are interesting on your styles and the colors and when you combine that with your cool music and your great music people are gonna love you and I think that was missing now we come to the third point. For Kelly and the group it was very important to have just lead singers. Like they didn't want backup singers. They wanted everybody to shine in the group. And I personally think that's very cool. I like groups like that. But I think everybody need a certain role in a group. Especially when you have so many members. If you listen to the first album of Envoke, Born to Sing, you're gonna realize that Cindy and Terry are leading most of the songs because the sound they tried to achieve for that album fitted more to their vocals. If you listen to the second album Funky Divas, you're gonna see that Dawn and Maxine lead most of the songs because the sound they tried to achieve for the second album fitted more to their voices. The thing with June's Diary is they had so many different styles, stole so many different voices in a group and they could use it for different genres of music but it was never clear what they want to achieve with their sound. Not in a bad way but they brought nothing new to the table. They tried just to do what the previous girl groups did and I think that it was a huge mistake because it's not just the talent, it's not just your voices, your harmonies. There are so many things you have to include especially in this era. For example I think Gabby has a huge unique voice like you can use it for more than just typical R&B tracks. You can use Brianna's voice for certain R&B pop records because her voice reminds me a lot of R&B and pop. Cheyenne for example she reminds me a lot of a dawn of and Vogue. Like she has something young, something fresh and something funky and a voice that you can use for different genres too. I think if you have songs where you have just two people leads that will make it easier for people to understand the group dynamic it has not to be all the time the same people but I say like in certain songs you have to take those people who are the strongest or one person who are the strongest in this song and you say okay lead this song that's exactly the same what the clock sisters do like every sister has a different element in her voice and sometimes all of them sing in, in, uh, in songs and there are some songs where two people lead or three
three people lead on there are some songs where just Dorinda lead and then you have some songs where just Karen lead or you have some songs where just Trinky or Jackie lead and that makes more sense because that makes the group more attractive to people who didn't know the group because you can have someone who don't like the typical R&B song and then you have like a Frank Sinatra type of song and someone is like oh I like that style I like that woman I like that voice fourth point the music was not that good like I'm talking about me personally I never felt their songs for some reason I don't know why but I never felt their songs they have just two songs that I like the first song was Problem and the second song was Rather Be All of Us was okay but I was never a fan of their music especially when they separated from their label like all the songs they did independently like I respect that what they did and they hustle and they work but I did not feel the songs that they released I think they needed to work hardcore on their sound they needed the right producers the right people who understand their vision right people who understand the music not just mu music and R&B but music in different genres who can bring something together that never existed before to push the envelope of girl groups it seemed like they never founded their sound it's like with destiny's child for example their first album was an experience and in the second album they knew exactly what they want and you can hear that with the writing on the walls there's a huge difference and with june stereo you can clearly hear they did not found their sound sorry just the truth the music is not that strong wrong sorry i always say too many things are happening in this world and you have to shake this world up not just the black culture the white culture everybody that's what michael jackson always did that's what janet always did like their music was for everybody and those type of songs were shaking the world like remember with the nation remember if remember they don't care about us remember just leave me alone or scream all those songs they change the world and that's the type of mindset a group or new artist or artist particular need and i felt like lyrically and sound wise most artists are not that strong they're all on the same like they are turning on the same circle and nobody trying to do something different remember the song of invoke free your mind that was a rock song that's a rock song and they sang over a rock song no girl group did that before and after that they took clearly a risk and that's what is missing not just girl groups but groups who bring something different to the table and for me June's Diary is bringing nothing new to the table it's the same old formula and I think that's one of the reasons why black groups or black girl groups are not moving right now before I move to the fifth point I want to give you another example think of the group mid condition mid condition they have a sound that nobody in this industry have no one I never heard that sound before a lot of people don't mention them but they are a legendary group and that's what i'm talking about the sound is super important it's not just you can sing the song sounds good the sound need to be distinctive that will separate you from the normal fifth point is the the biggest challenge that june starry had was that they were on the same label with fifth harmony fifth harmony established a fan base for themselves before the whole june starry history they already had fans and another thing was they were a mixed band and to have just a black band need means that you have to invest more to market them to the white audience maybe to invest more for their products when it comes to hair makeup and stuff like that you have to put more marketing dollars behind the black group that white people can remember them after they see them two or three times on big or huge tv shows so the label knew exactly exactly how much work they have to put into June's diary and they saw that they had already a good successful group why invest in a second group and put more effort and more work in the group not knowing if it will pay off when you can just focusing on one group so they dropped June's diary and they let them go those are the five points I needed to mention I personally think 
we live in a time where you can make a lot of money, where you can get a huge fan base without a huge record label. It will take you a little bit of time, but if you have it, you can control it and you can control your masters, you can control everything you do. Best examples are rapper Ross and Ryan Leslie. The problem with most artists are they focusing too much on the industry rules and as we are focusing on I want to be number one, I want to be on every radio station, on every award shows. Believe me or not, there are some independent artists who make much more money than your favorite rapper or your favorite singer out there. There are independent artists who can fill an arena with 12 or 10 thousand people and there are major artists who are number one. They can't fill a whole arena by themselves. I think if June Starry had from the beginning a different plan, a different strategy, not focusing that much on the industry and the industry rules and would have done it like Ross did, they would gain a whole bunch of fans around the world. Here's what I'm thinking, they sh should have used YouTube as the biggest marketing tool to become like bloggers who are always in contact or in connection with their fans. Because in today's world, everybody, or especially fans, want to know what you are doing, how you are spending your time, and you, you're gonna grow through YouTube because that's the amazing thing about YouTube. You're not gonna pay anything. You, you do nothing. YouTube is like the biggest, best tool that you can use to be in connection and to build a strong, established fan base. I think there are so many different things and tools they could do to be in connection with the fans and to, to build and grow their fan base. But like I said in my previous videos, a lot of new authors try to use the odd formula and that's not possible because without a label you can not promote yourself like a major artist promote himself so you need always to find different but strong ways to promote yourself without spending too much coins and we live in a time where it is 100% possible but just a lot of people don't know it that's the problem i hope you like the video when yes you can leave me a thumb up you can come and you can subscribe and if you want to know why Kelly's career never took off the way it should then click on the video on the info card and you can watch the video